Hey guys, it's Tired of 40. I've waited three long years after I've purchased my Harvest Right freeze dryer to do this video because today we're going to rehydrate three year old meat. <laughs> so, we're not just doing steak today, we're doing a plethora of meats. I've got some pork, I've got some fish, I've got some uh, New York strip that's diced, I've got uh, pork burger, which is very similar to hamburger, obviously, but I, I don't typically use hamburger. I like pork burger a lot better. Uh, this is raw pork burger. I've got a raw sirloin, and I've got actually a mystery bag that I can't remember what's in here, which is a good reason why you want to label your bags, but we're going to find out what this is uh, just kind of as a bonus. So I've gotten a lot of comments, and I've had time to go through all the comments, kind of comb through all of them, and see what you guys have suggested um, on my freeze-dried meat video that I did uh, almost a couple years back now. This is all three years old, at least three years old, and I actually, this is some of the first stuff that I ever did when I got my freeze dryer. So one of the really good things that I've heard is not to rehydrate the meat in water. Actually, to you can really rehydrate stuff in any kind of liquid. It doesn't have to be water as long as it has some water to it. So the stuff in the ball jars I'm going to be a little bit creative with, and it's actually kind of fun trying to match things with uh, certain meats that you can rehydrate in. So the chopped pork, I'm going to rehydrate that with barbecue sauce. Uh, the fish, I'm just going to do straight water because it's, it's a smoked fish and it's already pretty seasoned. So I don't, want it to, I don't want to overpower it. And then the New York strip that's diced, I'm going to do um, a combination of homemade sweet chili sauce, uh, some homemade green chili sauce, a little bit of soy sauce, and some Worcestershire sauce because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this for a stir fry. So if you're newer to freeze drying or even if you're not, uh, you can see definitely why you want to very clearly label all of your foods because it's after, after a certain period of time, you can forget what's in them, you can forget if they're raw or they're cooked, you can forget like if it's a, if it's a seasoned meat instead of just a plain meat. So definitely depending on when you get to that point where you're rehydrating and you want to cook it, you want to know every single detail about that meat that you possibly can. So I've got my rehydration station all set up here. I just want to, before I do anything, I want to show you um, what all of it looks like before I rehydrate it. If you've never seen my vacuum seal video using the Harvest Right, you definitely need to check that out. And here I'm going to show you why. Because it vacuum seals these ball jars uh, so tight that you almost have to pry them off. The, the difference is day and night in my opinion. So we'll start with the pork. Obviously it's going to be very dry, it's very crispy. Um, as is anything that comes out of the freeze dryer because you're removing all the moisture. This is just, uh, I believe it's pork chop. And this was smoked tilapia, and it's all it's already cooked, and it's been brined and seasoned. So I've actually tried a, a bit of this before. It turns out really nice. Here's our New York strip. This is cooked New York strip, but same thing. It's it's just uh, you can see all of the the grains of the meat. So I'm gonna load this bowl up with uh, barbecue sauce. And depending, so I, I've never actually rehydrated, believe it or not, with something other than water. But it's come up so many times that it's, uh, and it seems like it would just taste amazing. So I might have to add a little water to it because I don't know if there's actually enough, if there's actually enough moisture in the barbecue sauce. But I'm just going to slather this on here and uh, we'll check back on it. Next I'm going to throw this tilapia in here and then just cover it in water. And we're going to let that sit also. I think the key with this fish especially is if it's just submerged in water, not to leave it in too long. So we'll probably want to keep an eye on this one. And last but not least, our New York strip. This is our homemade green chili sauce and it's got a major kick to it. And some Worcestershire. Some homemade sweet chili. I know it says Kroger on it, but we just reused the bottle. Maybe I'll make a video on the recipes for this sweet chili and this green chili sauce. And then we want to put some uh, soy sauce in here, and I don't want to make it too salty, so not a whole lot. And then if I need any kind of filler, I can add more water, more Worcestershire, stuff that's not going to overpower uh, the spice and the taste of the meat. 
So I'd love to hear in the comments section if you have some suggestions of what you rehydrate meat into, or even if it's not meat, maybe other things. And on that note, I just started a Facebook group, and my goal with the group is to get a bunch of people that are like-minded, freeze dryers, uh, all together on one site. They can swap tips, they can swap uh, failures and successes and all that kind of stuff. We can swap recipes because there's a, the Harvest Right freeze dryer community is growing quickly. And even since I started doing these videos, I've really noticed just an explosion of people asking questions. And there really just needs to be a place where we can all get together and, uh, and chat. And I'll put that description for the Facebook group down below. Once we get some momentum going, we're going to be a force of nature. So while we let the stuff in the ball jar get going, um, it might take, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour to get them completely rehydrated and soak up all of that goodness in there. Uh, we're going to do the Mylar bags, and I'm really curious to see the, some of the stuff in the Mylar because it's been three years since I've seen it. These I want to put onto the grill because I want to kind of show you all the different ways that you can rehydrate. Obviously that's going to be the number one question on people's mind is can you rehydrate something that's 3 or 5 or 15 years old, throw it back on the grill and have a decent steak if you want to. So another thing I've noticed in the comments is people were saying from my other uh, freeze dried meat video that I overcooked the steak. So when you freeze dry you're essentially taking all of the moisture or any kind of moisture, it doesn't even if it's just a, a percentage of uh, water based, you're taking all that moisture out of whatever you're freeze drying. So when you rehydrate something, you know, blood is not going to just re reappear in a steak. So if a steak looks like it's medium, it's actually not because you're just not rehydrating all the blood. But that's also part of the appeal of being able to rehydrate with other things besides water because you're, you're basically infusing just more and more flavor into whatever you're rehydrating. So to clarify, I'm going to still cook the sirloin to 130 degrees like I normally would and it's not going to look like it's rare, it's not going to look like it's medium rare, it'll look like it's medium or, or even more than that. So next let's do these mylar bags. I'm going to do the, uh, the pork burger first and this is raw and again I'm going to stress the importance of labeling all of this stuff. Okay, next let's do the sirloin. And then last but not least, the mystery bag. Oh, what a bonus. Now we have dessert. It's apple crisp. So there's our burger. Here's our sirloin. And you can see that it's, it's hard. And our bonus apple crisp. Okay, so I'm actually going to go into these baking pans so I can keep this stuff separate and not get it mixed up. So I'm just going to throw in a little bit of Worcestershire on this because I want the stuff to, uh, that's initially soaked up into this to go straight into the meat. Uh, so I don't want to like just hose this down with moisture right now. I just kind of want to get that initial flavor into there and then I'm going to do a little bit of soy sauce. So when the meat is in this state, it's just going to it's just going to soak everything up like a sponge and I want the most important stuff to get in there first. And then I'm going to hit it with a little bit of homemade rub and hopefully it'll just pull in some of that homemade rub flavor. The, the burger is actually okay with just doing in water. You don't want to do it for too long or it's going to become real mushy. Kind of like if you took raw hamburger and soaked it in water for a long time. So definitely keep an eye on this. And I'm going to completely submerge this in flavored liquid. I'm going to throw a little, I put more Worcestershire in. I'm going to do just some dabs of hot sauce on here, some Tabasco. Because we like things spicy around here. A little more soy sauce and I think just a, a little bit of olive juice. So while we're waiting for everything to get rehydrated, I want to welcome you to the channel if you're new to the channel. If you've never been here, uh, take a minute to subscribe and click the bell to get notifications so you can uh, figure out when new video videos come out. We do some freeze drying. Uh, we do some frugal living, food preservation, we do some cooking, some grilling, and you get to journey with me and my family on our retirement at the age of 40. Also check out that Facebook group if you haven't already. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. It really helps the YouTube algorithm push this video to people that will find it helpful. So the fish, after half an hour, is, uh, is definitely done. It's, uh, it's, it's mushy. So I think what I'm going to do is throw this on the Traeger a little, for a little bit on smoke 
and just get some of that crispiness back to the smoked fish. So the fish is just going back on smoke and I'm gonna leave it on there for probably 20, 30 minutes. All right, here's our moment of truth on the first thing. This is the smoked fish. It looks really good. It is a little bit dried out and part, part of that is probably partially me. It's still really good. You still get all the flavor. And it still actually does have a little bit of crisp to it, which is great. So I think the next thing that will be done is the pork. I did add a little bit of water slowly to it. I'm, I'm gonna try something different on the pork though. I'm gonna try, uh, I'm actually gonna make pork sandwiches out of this. So what I wanna do is take this over to the stove and I think I'm actually gonna heat it up in the barbecue sauce. Another thing I think would work really well is an instant pot or a slow cooker or a pressure cooker. I added a little extra moisture to the pork and I think I'm just gonna let this uh, cook and kind of steam itself as well. I've had really good luck with steam. So I cranked the heat up on this quite a bit, left it covered, and you can see it's, it's boiling real good. He started getting tender right away, and this is actually done now. So I was gonna dice this up even more and use, a, use it for a pork sandwich, but really it's so tender now that I think it's, it can just be eaten the way it is. You could throw it in a sandwich even in big chunks like this. That high heat made all the difference. And you can see everything's really tender now. The pork I didn't really have high hopes for. I didn't think it was gonna, I didn't think it was gonna get tender again, but it was just a matter of finding the right way to rehydrate it. I definitely think that steam with the high heat and then infusing it with the barbecue sauce, it just makes it really, really good. All right, so let's get back to our other stuff. The dense meats are gonna be really slow going to rehydrate them. So I think what I'm gonna do with, with the sirloins and the New York strip, just put it into a Ziploc bag and let it hang out overnight. Right, this burger is ready to go, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a burger and then we're gonna put that on the grill. All right, so this burger is gonna look a little bit different than you're used to because it is pork burger and because we rehydrated it with some some other stuff. But one thing that I am noticing is the texture of the burger is a little bit grainier, I think. Uh, that would probably be the best way to describe it. It's not quite sticking together as well as it would if it were just raw from the store. And actually, Harvest Right does not recommend doing raw meats. And part of that could possibly be because they don't like the outcome. I, I don't know. But it's, it's not really sticking together like it could. I don't know if you could put something in there, some sort of filler to kind of get it to grip back together, but we'll put it on the grill and we'll see how it, how it fares on the grill. Let's take a look at it. It's looking good. The juice is starting to come out of it. Let's pull it off of here, let it rest for a few minutes and then we're gonna give it a taste test. Aesthetically, it's still kind of got that grainy texture to it and it's kind of crumbly. I think he'd be totally fine just using this for beef burgers or something like that. We, we've done that in the past or tacos or something, but to make a burger out of it, it doesn't really seem like it wants to stay together like a burger should. So for the taste, I can definitely tell that it's soaked in some of that stuff that we put in there. If you used it in a beef burger or taco, I don't think you'd ever know the difference. New York strip and our sirloin has been sitting in the fridge overnight, actually for probably about 16 hours, so I would think that they would be good and done by now. So I'm gonna get some hot oil going for my stir fry with the New York strip. I've chopped up some onions and peppers to get that going. Onions and peppers are done. I'm gonna add the steak, and I'm actually gonna put in all this marinade with it also, uh, in hopes that it will kind of rejuvenate the juiciness of that steak. I'm gonna turn down the heat and I'm gonna leave it covered for a little bit so that can cook off. So our stir fry is, is definitely coming back. The steak is coming back. I can see the juiciness on it. I believe our stir fry is done. It looks like the, the meat took in all of the, the moisture again. Put some fresh vegetables in there. I've got a feeling this is gonna be really, really good. It smells really good. Plus it's got all of that great uh, seasoning that we sucked back into the meat. 
All right, the moment of truth. It's really good. I'd have no problem eating this anytime. Okay, we're ready for the steaks. We're gonna leave those on for about five minutes and we're gonna check them out. So I'm gonna tell you one thing that I do not like about rehydrating with the marinade is it's really hard to tell if the steak is done or not. I'm guessing it's gonna be really easy to overdo it. The other thing that I don't really like is that I think you're pretty much just stuck with whatever it is. It's either done or it's not done. There's no medium, there's no rare, there's no medium rare, there's no well done. It's just pretty much all gonna be medium to done. All right, I really hope I didn't leave these on too long. Like I said, it's really hard to tell. They seem tender enough. Let's go take them inside. So remember, we're not gonna get a rare steak. Everything is gonna look like it's well done. It doesn't feel like it's tough, um, especially for a thin steak like this. So my final thoughts, the, uh, the steak, I would call it maybe a 50-50. Um, the chances of eating a, a big one inch thick, juicy, rare steak in a zombie apocalypse is probably not gonna happen. I don't know if it's because it's raw. I know, like I said, Harvest Right doesn't recommend doing raw meats. And to me, the raw meat does not turn out as well as something that's already pre-seasoned, pre-cooked, and then rehydrated. I've always had good luck with that. But I also don't think that a whole piece of meat like this, a big chunk of meat, is going to do as well as something that's sliced or shredded. I definitely want to hear your comments in this particular video. And if you've got some extra tips, I know there's people that have been freeze drying for a real long time now and our community just keeps growing. So uh, more opinions definitely help out. In the meantime, this is Retired at 40. Remember to live life simple. We'll catch you next week.